I'm here today to review the AODIN mini projector. Um, I have quite a few pages of notes written down because there's a lot of technical specs I want to make sure you get. I already have the room dark and the projector turned on ready for the e-share, but we'll go through a few things. This is the, like I said, AODIN Android portable mini projector. I got it in the white with the pink band version, um, which I'll pick up and show you. I see. Let's put it back down. It comes with the air mouse, a mini tripod, HDMI cable, obviously the projector, a power adapter, and a user manual. The user manual is really handy, and I especially like the little flyer um, they added to it. It's like a lot of the new updated information. This pamphlet is pretty clear, pretty easy to read. Um, so I, that's also, like I said, save those. You get a regular AC adapter. It has this type of charging port, so don't lose it. I like this better. They don't break nearly like the, you know, micro USBs, I guess. So you get an HDMI cord for plugging into your computer, and then you're also going to get a little velvet drawstring bag, and you're going to get an air mouse. So you get the part that plugs into your you know, computer, it will be in the battery compartment. This acts like a, this is a mouse for when you're using the computer. It doesn't slide open, there's a little notch here, it just put your fingernail in there, pull it open, and it runs off of two AAA batteries, and those are not included. The mouse works beautifully, it works just fine. Um, I'm not used to these things. I might have a touch screen and I might use my mouse. So if you're doing a presentation, you can't be right at your computer. It would be handy. It's really good for going through photo slides, um, clicking on a few documents. If you have to do a lot of clicking, it's going to be a little awkward. You almost have to go way past what you want and then click what you need. It's At that point, you're right at your computer. You might as well just use. I actually, when I was playing with it myself, I ended up going back to touch screen and my mouse, to be honest. So instead of that one, I switched it out. So the tripod is pretty good. And the, um, I've actually had, I tested out in a house where I, um, we have cathedral ceilings and a lot of paintings up on the wall and photos. So I had to use it up on one of the slanted ceilings. And the projector is really good at self-leveling off its photo. And this teeny tripod, believe it or not, held the projector at this much of a slant. But what I did is I took something behind it so the weight wouldn't pull it over, if that makes any sense. Make sure these little legs are wide open because it'll fall over the little legs on this. They aren't wide open, so make sure about that. It has up to a 120-inch display. It has on it, on this side, it has the HDMI input, USB inputs, the aux cable or headphone input, and the power um, adapter port. This side is where you're going to put your micro SD card. Um, you have to supply your own. I have one in there. You want to make sure it's a minimum class 10 to show videos. This is the actual on off button. You have to turn this button on to turn it on again. You have to two on buttons. So it can't just turn on by itself if you're throwing it in your briefcase type of situation. So you're going to turn it on here first. And then you're going to turn it on here, and you have to give it time. It has to have time to warm up, come on. And even once the screen is up, it has to, like if you try to pull up, there's a button here, M for menu. It will not pull up the menu button until it's good and ready. So don't freak out. Just give it time to warm up. This um, is your back button right here. And these are your directionals um, to uh, move through the screen to pick up what you want. So. Go ahead and set it back up. I've moved it around. It's not that, it's not really level at the moment. <laughs> so um, it has built into a Wi Fi and Bluetooth. So you have to use that little trackpad, that little round pad to go ahead and give yourself some time because you have to put in your password. And the first time I tried to connect to my Wi Fi, uh, it, it took me a while. It, I don't know what it was. Brand new out of the box, didn't want to connect, don't give up on it. All of a sudden, I just decided it would go ahead and click onto my Wi-Fi, and now that I, and I came here, and it went onto the Wi-Fi here with that issue. So, I don't know if it was a brand new thing, how to warm up, I don't know, but it's been working beautifully going on too. Like I said, now a different Wi-Fi, um, just perfectly. So, it has an internal 5000 mAh 
lithium battery. So it can run about three hours. It could run a, a solid long movie, continuous use without going off on you. But you can, it will run while plugged in. So you could plug it into the power source and it will run for you there too. So it, let me see here. It has Android 4.4. You know, it needs, you need Android 4.4 or a higher version for it to operate, but it can, it's also iOS um, compatible. It has what they call Miracast, AirPlay, EarShare capabilities. AirShare, AirPlay, I mean, is for iOS. I haven't tested that. Miracast does not work on my phone. It was just this massive ordeal. I downloaded every version of Miracast. I have a Samsung Note 8. I downloaded Samsung's version doesn't work. eShare, if you have the newer phone, down, I have the new Note 8, just go ahead and download eShare. And um, the basic eShare, nothing fancy, just eShare, and it connects beautifully to eShare. So you can go ahead and do that. It has pretty bright. It has an internal um, 300 lumen, you know, projector lamp inside of it, and it works beautifully. It's like I said, it's pretty bright. So try to go through here. I want to make sure it does a lot. So I want to make sure I don't forget. So that's why I wrote, I wrote myself like a three page review <laughs> as I was going through it. I, I, I got it, um, like five days ago and I've been on it every day for hours and hours, um, testing all the different things. You know, like I said, at first it was very frustrating for me, you know, some things, it, they have so much jam into some things so tiny, some things work unbelievably well and some things are a little more frustrating but everyone has their own patience level so what I would use it for love it it's gonna get a lot of use in my house so um, it's um let's see I've been wrote down you can easily share information onto your computer and everything and from your computer to this for work so it's really great for that so let me see here I wrote some quick little notes the volume is pretty low on the projector it's if you're by yourself and it's quiet, like um, my husband travels a lot on the road, so if he wanted to throw this up and watch a movie at the hotel, um, he could. It would be perfectly loud enough for him. Not a big deal. But you could attach headphones to it, and you can use it that way. I brought, because it has Bluetooth, but I'm attaching it via an aux cable, so you don't have to be all fancy and worry about connecting it many different things. Um, I brought a Bluetooth speaker. This is a 16-watt. Bluetooth speaker also, so we will um, connect it to that. Let me plug it in right now as I'm thinking about it. All right, now well, it's plugged in. So um, I think that's all at the moment off those off those notes that we'll go through. So I'm going to go ahead. I have. Let me take a sec. No, I'll, I'll leave it open. I'll go back to the menu after. I have eShare the eShare button pressed already. And at the first line you'll see is it's already signed into my Wi-Fi. So now I gotta go onto my phone and tap the eShare button. And then at the bottom of the eShare button, I gotta wait for things. You have to pick, um, it'll say remote, TV mirror, mirroring, or camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and you have to ignore all these brightly colored things. It's hard to see on the, I know on the video. And go to the bottom, it's very faint gray, and you'll see a little word that says mirroring. Go ahead and click on mirroring. Start now. And um, my phone just bopped around, but now it has my, my phone up. Let me move this out of the way a little bit. So I can click on anything through here. Um, let's go to gallery. And um, we're remodeling the home. There's a lot of pictures of the home in here. <laughs> oh, we have silly pictures. See? Christmas t-shirt. <laughs> oh, way too many of that. It's a little behind. There we go. So it's a little delayed. We have Pikachu at McDonald's. <laughs> Family. They probably don't want their pictures up there. But um, so whatever you have on here, but if you, if you pick it up on your phone, it's going to go back. It's a little, like I said, a little behind. Um, if, if you pick it up on your phone, it pulls up your phone screen size. 
So you got to keep that in, in mind also. But, you know, I have to get used to my new phone still. Let's go to on the apps for the projector. It has an it has its own icon for Facebook and Twitter. For the love of God, I cannot sign in. I cannot get the menu button to pop up at the menu button. I can't get the keyboard to pop up when it's flashing, you know, sign in your password and everything. Oh, okay. That's the marketplace. I was like, where is that? Let me go to... Okay, so it... But then I, with the mirroring, I don't need to go through that trouble. And I said, I said, so I just said, gave up. I don't need to go through Facebook and Twitter directly on the projector. Or I can just pull up the mirroring, go through it on my phone if, if I'm trying to share something. So, but like I said, because it's on my phone, and that's the news. Oops, I clicked back already. I didn't mean to slide it over. You know, so I can scroll through here. Now, if I was mirroring on a tablet the screen would be much bigger. It would be more enjoyable. Unfortunately, at this home right here, I'm logged into a 2G Wi-Fi, so it's a little slower. So if you logged into a faster Wi-Fi, um, it would move a little faster through here. Let's see, because I'm moving my phone and it's trying to catch up. I don't want to try and get people's names off of here. So I could do that, and then we'll log out, we'll go out, and then I can pull down my icons, and I have a Twitter notification, so I'll go ahead and pull up that. And there, so I have my Twitter up. So we can do that. So we'll get out of the eShare. I got You got to go into your phone to stop it. And I'm going to back out. Alright. Oh, I pressed exit again. I guess not. Boy, it's finicky. I want out. There, finally. Okay. So it's more finicky on my phone than it is on here. So now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to push the back button. See, it's leveling off because I tilted it to the ceiling. And now we're on the main menu. I'm trying to get it so it's not so bright onto the screen. I'm sorry. So the, that's the big e-share. Then we could choose apps and go into apps. And you'll see where it has Twitter and Facebook right here. And it has all kinds that just are, to be honest, a little mind-numbing. And when you first get on here, you have to, you'll need to actually kind of almost download it and then update it. And some of them, like here's the internet. So it has an internet and has a Google icon. And you have to sign into Google and you have to, I keep accepting us. It's telling me now I have to accept yes again, which is a little annoying. Um, and you can type in where you want to go, and you can slowly scroll through. But I have a heck of a time clicking on something to scroll through. So, like I said, with mirroring, I just go went back to my phone. It was a lot easier. So we're going to click out the Internet. And so if you had Hulu, you could use Hulu in here. You could use Netflix in here if you have it. Um, YouTube, same issue. It has the thing. Once I signed into Google, I was able to pull up my YouTube account and my son's YouTube accounts on mine. I know you can't see it because for some reason it's just really bright. I'm seeing it in the screen here. But um, it won't let me pick which one to run. But like, again, I'll just use my phone because it has the mirroring. So it's just easier. So now I'm going to... Um, back out of YouTube and you have your settings icon if you need to go to settings I'll click on that and you can pick your settings and it goes through 
this is where you're going to sign into your Wi-Fi. So you're going to go to settings, sign into your Wi-Fi. I should tell you about your internal storage. You can, you know, just like I said, regular settings like anywhere else. And then you have a section with files and everything else. But what we're now what I'm going to go ahead and do is, let's see here. There's the wireless update, the voice search. I haven't been able to get the voice search to work. Play Store, you can go to the Play Store. You know, once you're signed into Google, you can go to the Play Store and download apps from the Play Store. So you can do that. So that's very convenient. But go ahead and sign into your Google, update your Google, agree to the terms, get all that done first, and then go to everything else once you get a share done. Let's <laughs> do that first if you have a newer phone. So let's go up here. I think folders is folders that I want. Okay, we're going to go down here. Backups, Android, downloads, movies, pictures. I'm going to go up here. Nope, it's not letting me scroll down on the side. There we are, SD card. So I went to, um, it says SD card, but it's, my, it's a micro SD card. So I just clicked on that, and we'll go down to, um, my husband downloaded three movies to the micro SD card for me. So. And this is the first time I've gone to it through this folder. All right. Now I gotta turn on the speaker. That's why you're not hearing volume. The Bluetooth device is ready to pair. The radio mode up. Aux input mode up. Like I said, it's not really level. <laughs> I messed it up. You want to turn off the, that light over there? It's on the wall by the hand rail. That survival of the forest itself depends on that kind of faith, and that the good guys need all the help they can get. And that if you don't believe it, take a close look. And if you still don't, look closer. See, it's so bright, it's almost too bright for my video to pick up the clarity because it's really bright. And this is playing straight off the wall. And the wall has some texture. <laughs> so. So it's pretty clear. So while that's playing, all right, let's see here. So I'll read you some of the specs. Obviously, it's wireless. I told you about the Miracast AirPlay and eShare. Told you about the 5,000 mAh battery. It's 300 lumens. So overall, um, it's a great projector. It's great for, it's fantastic for movies. If you have to do presentations, you can download anything to your micro SD card, put it in, it'll play it beautifully. Um, like I said, because the volume's really low, we use the speak. It's easier to use a speaker to get the volume level you want. I'll unplug it and I'll show you the difference.
It's a lot quieter. But I can work with this thing for six hours, because I have. <laughs> Plugged in, obviously, and it barely gets warm to the touch. So it doesn't get hot. I'm amazed because it's so small. But obviously, I'm glad they put the air flow in the front because the projector lamp's there. You're not going to be accidentally blocking that off, making it heat up. So if, you, if you're going to use this for speaker night, whatever, um, I suggest getting or using one you already have, your Bluetooth speaker. It's a lot easier to run through a lot of the functions via your phone or tablet, via eShare if you have that or um, AirPlay, you have iOS, it, it's a lot easier. The Air Mouse is a nice touch if you have to do presentations and you can't be right at your computer. It does work, it does work well. It's not smooth running, so don't expect to be really smooth and easy to work with like a regular mouse, because it's, it's not gonna be. I like that it comes with this tripod. Again, that keeps it up and elevated and it keeps it cool, so it doesn't overheat. It's pretty durable because, as always, I've dropped it. I've already dropped it a couple of times. So, and it's still working really well. Give yourself some time. Um, read the things. Learn the apps. And um, like I said, it doesn't matter that a lot of the internal, like working through it without a phone or tablet, because just mirror. If you can mirror, you can do all those functions. You don't have to worry about passwords, updating this or that. You can literally just run it from your phone or projector, I mean your phone or tablet, and, um, you know, have a great time. HDMI-wise, it works beautifully on my con on my computer. Um, I had no issues with that at all. Like, the, the few issues that I have with this thing are running the apps directly through the projector, only because sometimes I can't get the keyboard to pop up to put in my password and sign in my email account. And then that I can't use the the program. So that's the only, you know, that's the main issue I've had is being able to not get the keyboard to pop up because without that you can't do it. So, but then and I didn't need to because I can just pull up all those same apps um, with the mirroring and just run it through there. So to be honest, I'd rather do that anyhow. So it was a lot easier, a lot faster um, that way than a lot less things I'm taking up the internal memory with also. So clarity-wise, it's fantastic. It's just as good as our larger projectors. Um, we're really, really pleased with it. So this is the Aoden Mini Projector. Um, we actually, we, we love it. So I give it two thumbs up. Like with anything, you're going to have some issues, but <laughs> it's well worth it. Thanks.